Hey everyone. So what I'd like to do in this three part series is build out a fictional home improvement company that generates leads. We'll have part one, part two, and part three. I'll try to keep this build as simple as possible. We'll build the website with WordPress. That'll be part one. We'll deploy it with a cPanel, which is usually the environment that you would find yourself working with if you're building and deploying a WordPress website. And that'll be part two. We'll run Google PPC ads, and that'll be the final part, which will hopefully get us to a point where we have a website up and running, um, just a one pager, and we're generating leads. We'll make sure our site loads relatively fast and that we're ready for a strong marketing campaign. I chose to focus on home improvement because I think that it's a niche that's more accessible for beginners. Even if your marketing campaigns are not performing in the best way possible, the profits on a kitchen or you know a, a bathroom remodel can usually sustain the error margin that you would have uh, when you're first starting out. You know, a project for home improvement can go anywhere from a couple thousand dollars all the way to you know something like fifty or a hundred thousand dollars if it's a big basement remodel or a fancy kitchen. So my hope uh, through this is that by the end of the series, you'll be able to help local businesses that have a decent profit margin to generate leads and that you'll feel a bit more comfortable to reach out to these businesses and offer your services. So let's check out what this page will look like and how we'll go about all of this. So this is essentially where all the potential prospects from our Google PPC campaigns are going to end up landing. That's why it's called the landing page. Um, anybody that clicks on, on one of our Google ads is essentially coming to this environment where uh, we have a page that kind of shares some information about us. We might add a button or two or change something ever so slightly, but overall this is the look and feel that we're going to shoot for. Um, something that strikes right now to me is that we need to add a get quote button right here that maybe could pop out just a, a bit more, maybe in this color. Um, you know, very limited sections here. Everything is as clean and simple as it can get. We really want the user to just get an idea of what this company is about. Go to the bottom of the page after they get, you know, the first impression here of who we are and what we're about and really just feed us the information and share with us what project they're looking to do. If you're wondering why we went with these questions, um, I find them to just be the bare bones of what we need to actually get that lead and try to convert them. Of course, we can go and try to see if, you know, we have some interest here for an addition or a patio or roofing or what this project is about, but that's more friction. In other words, the more questions I ask here, the more friction and less inclined the potential prospect here is to go through this process to provide their information to us. And we want that process to be as clean, elegant, fast as possible that way we get more information especially in the beginning stages you know you could get to a point where you want to filter down some of the noise that you're getting and you want to only get really hot leads that come in and say that you know they're in for a kitchen remodel or they want a basement remodel and so you can add those questions but in the beginning stages when you don't want to take the chance of losing any type of project and you know say you have a client right now that's really hungry for leads and needs the work and is looking to build an online presence you want less friction and you want that process to be really really fast and smooth so we'll go with this but know that in general you can of course change this up add some questions make it a bit more you know sophisticated that way you're not just getting any type of lead but you're getting very specific leads to some sort of a requirement that you have from the client that you're working with. So again, what we'll do next is we're gonna actually jump into the build. So I have here a brand new WordPress environment. I ended up doing it on a subdomain. We actually had this kind of lying around so it was ready to go. Um, you can use whatever you want. It could be local as well. It's completely up to you. We will go through the process of deploying it on you know, a main domain, so whatever that may be, .com. In our case, I'm probably going to go with ebahomeimprovement.com. Um, so you'll notice here that posts, everything is empty, just to kind of show that we're starting from scratch here. First thing we're going to do, let's jump into it, is go to themes under appearance. And since I plan to use Elementor Builder, that's my go-to when using WordPress, I'm going to go ahead and add the theme that they actually recommend to use when building with Elementor, and that is a theme called Hello. So we will search here for hello, install it, activate it. 
And now we can actually go back just to keep things lean and mean. We will delete the other theme that came pre-installed. You might have something else depending on what environment you're working under. But go ahead and I usually like to clean it up and only have the theme that I'm actually working with. WordPress can very quickly get overwhelmed with plugins and themes and all types of bells and whistles that you can add on to WordPress. So always try to keep it as clean and as lean as possible. Otherwise, it can get pretty messy. So now that we have our theme ready to go, the first uh, plugin we're going to go ahead and add here is Elementor itself. That's going to be the page builder that we're going to end up using with WordPress. There are so many different ways to start building an actual website as far as the, you know, the building blocks go. Um, I personally have tried most of them and I'm a big fan of Elementor when it comes to this. Elementor allows you to kind of do the drag and drop thing, but I feel like the way that they went at it is a bit more intuitive. It does have its you know pros and cons, but overall I'm a fan. Um, let's go ahead and add also auto uh, optimize if I can spell that correctly. They only use one O. Auto optimize is going to kind of uh, speed up things for us. They're going to uh, this plugin is going to handle for us minifying you know some of our code in the back. We're not actually touching any of this. That way. Um, when someone is clicking on our ad and they load our website, it loads for them much quicker than a typical WordPress installation would load. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate that. Activate Elementor. And we're gonna also add um, Elementor, if I can just get that right. Yep, okay, cool. So we'll also add the sticky header effects for Elementor. Uh, sticky header effects is gonna, as it sounds, going to allow us to have a sticky header. And if we go to all our plugins now, okay, so let's just kind of activate all that together. One more plugin I'm going to go ahead and install by uploading this file actually and not searching for it is Elementor Pro. Elementor Pro is going to allow us to have, it's going to unlock a few of the features that Elementor kind of only gives to uh, folks that pay for it. Um, it makes life a lot easier having the whole builder unlocked for you. So that way, you know, if you need a particular widget, it's not, um, not accessible for you. So up to you, you don't have to use Elementor Pro. I, I actually, my first few websites were, uh, you know, good old Elementor. And then, um, when I was able to afford it from the agency, um, I went ahead and made a purchase for Elementor Pro. As you see, I went ahead and created a home page. You can call this anything at all that you'd want. Um, we'll tell uh, WordPress later to start using this page as the home page. It doesn't really have to be called home. I like to explicitly call it home just because it's clear to me when I start having more and more pages that this is my main home page. Um, make sure to also publish it. That way it's live and kicking so we can start using it. And once it's up and running, you can go ahead and, and click on edit with Elementor from there, or you can go into the page where you'll have some more basic settings and then you can click on edit with Elementor. So whatever you prefer, you have both of those options for you to jump into the editor and get going with the project. Okay, so this is Elementor Builder. You have here an ability on the right side where your canvas is to select some uh, form of structure that you want to work with. And then on the left side, you have all the widgets. So I'm not going to get too deep into, you know, all the functionalities of Elementor, uh, whatever we bump into to actually get this landing page going, I might explain a bit further, but that's it. So let's get right into it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and update our page settings by clicking in the bottom left here on the gear. And we have here a page layout. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to Elementor full width. And that'll kind of just get us working with a different type of canvas that I prefer to work with. Um, and let's go back now to our widgets and let's define here our first area to work with. And the top section we're gonna take care of in a little bit. So don't worry about that just yet. Okay, so first things first, let's define the structure that we're going to be working with. So let's give it a width of about 1300 for the section that we're on. So if you click right here, it'll give you the options uh, for the section. And let's give it a minimum height. Uh, 
of let's do v8 so view height of let's go with 80 that should be pretty good right and let's give it a background image so you all start seeing something here so i've dropped some images for us to work with y'all can go to uh, pixabay.com or uh, unsplash any of those places i kind of just googled around and found some images that can work for us so we'll use this image for our background so you'll notice that we're starting to finally get something going here i'm gonna drop into here maybe uh, an intersection and into this area i'm gonna go ahead and drop two buttons so you'll notice that this is a really easy um, builder to work with. And the more you work with it and learn ins and outs, uh, the easier it gets. There's actually a really cool way to work now with Elementor, but I'm not going to get into it. You can kind of define the overall layout and feel for the site. That way you don't have to constantly modify font and text size and headings and all that but i feel like it's just too much work for this specific landing page and we can get through it pretty quickly i actually want to uh let's make this no repeat and let's make it a cover there you go that looks a lot better so now what we'll do is let's define this as our services section or button that will navigate to our section and let's call this let's go with get quote if I could just spell it properly all right let's call this get in touch and then up in the top right when we make our menu we'll call it um, get quote Okay, so let's add another widget here, and let's. this is going to be our heading, so we'll add that to the top section. So again, we have here, it's kind of hard to see right now, but we have here, and let's open our navigation panel, and this makes things a bit easier. The reason I like working with the navigator is in many situations with these drag and drops, and specifically with the Lamentor, um, it's kind of hard to see you know, which layer is on top or which layer belongs to a specific section or column. And when you view things here, it's a lot easier. And then you can kind of rename it like the Photoshop, Photoshop style. So you can call this area or this even this entire section and it'll navigate here. So if I click here, it'll show me where I am. And if I click here, uh, it'll show me where I am. So I'm going to rename this section. We can kind of call this, whoops, I'm in caps here. Uh, hero and now anytime we're under hero we know what's going on so as we add more sections it'll become easier for us to navigate through the site and you know uh, jump to particular sections we want to work in so let's go to our services column and services button and let's call this get in touch we might rename that later maybe get quote get in touch this is the button so now that we have that going um, let's give our button some design here so we'll click on style uh, what do I want to do let's uh, eliminate eliminate yeah let's go with no radius on these buttons Let's pull up a, a color. So I've, I've predefined, so it'll be easier for me, but you can click here and choose whatever color you want for the background. So I'm gonna go with the primary that I want here. If you wanna go with the same color, that's the color code. So it just makes it easier for me. When I update, that little box will update. Sometimes Elementor is funny like that. Uh, so now I can just kinda go copy and paste style it'll do that so I just got to go like this and now both buttons are the same but in this case I actually want this button to be a different color that way they kind of go together here and it's not too much of the same color 
And by the way, you can hit Command Z or Control Z to go back. So if I went like this and then hit Command Z, it would go back to where I want it to be. Um, I think that's pretty good. Let's update the header as well. So turn your dreams into, into reality. Let's update that. Let's make it a period. Um, and what we can do here is let me see what the text size I use. So EM4. So let's update that to, I have it on my left side here so that way we can rebuild it exactly the same way I showed it to you. So this would be EM4 and we can go with something like 500, maybe 600. That looks pretty good. And let's make it in the middle. Let's update so that we don't lose any changes here. So, so far that's all we got. So if we preview the page, so far that's all we have. So we have turn your dreams into a reality. It's a bit harder to see this. So what we can do is go here to our text and give it a shadow, uh, just to add some contrast here, black on white. So you'll see that it's becoming a bit easier to see it. You don't wanna make it feel too three dimensional you'll see that the shadow gets pretty aggressive. So what we can do is just drop it a slight shadow kind of in the middle there. We can make the blur aggressive and you'll kind of see it more and more. Keep it around here. And, whoops, my button here is gone. Update. Okay, so let's go to our next section, which is gonna be, again, we're gonna have here a concept of a picture on the right and then a picture on the left. So. Let's create another section. Uh, let's give it two columns and let's define the section to be 1300 like the above section. Let's add an image on the right and let's add what we have on the left is gonna be a heading and we're gonna design everything in a sec and then we'll throw a text editor under that heading. Let's go to this section first off and get this going in the middle so that way it starts looking a bit better. And let's go to this section and let's give it a padding of 45 and then on the right let's give it 35 and again 45. That way it'll have that effect that we want. Um, let's see here. Now let's actually give the image here a margin of minus 15, whoops, of minus 15. And this will give it the effect that we want and you'll see that in a sec. So once we give the column a background of a different color, um, and you'll see the effect now of the image kind of overflowing above the column that is actually containing it. So let's choose an image and let's go with, what are we gonna go with here? Let's go with this one. So we're gonna, of course, need to give it some padding on the top and the bottom. So let's go to the section, advanced. Let's change it to EM and let's unclick this. That way they're all not working together. So if this were clicked and I would give it say, you know, five, it would define it across the board to everything. What we really want is to, well, let's stick with five, but only give it to a specific area. So we only want it to the top and the bottom. And now that's starting to look a lot better. In order to modify any style to be a different color, there's a few ways to go about it. I find that the easiest way is to just jump in here and give it a different style with some basic HTML. Um, so we'll wrap the any style with a uh, an A tag, so that way it'll apply that style for us. And that's why I have that color in my clipboard. So I'll close parentheses, close the tag, and then just to be uh, good here, close the tag all the way. So now we're good to go and the any style looks a bit different. I think that this now looks a lot better. 
right? And we might do some touch-ups, but overall I think this looks good. We can give this section right here, so just the text, a different uh, padding to the right, so we can maybe make it, uh, let's give it more padding. There you go. Just so that it's not touching, um, it, it was getting too close, if you see before, it was getting too close to the image, so just to give it some room to breathe. Now, if you actually close this, you'll see that it looks a bit different when we preview, but it still got a bit close. I actually like the way that it is. Okay, so, so that you all see maybe a different way of going about this, I'm gonna go ahead and call this section design and build. Oops, whoops, uh, that didn't copy. Design and build any style. And what we'll do is we'll quickly duplicate this section. Again, I want you all to see a different way of working with this. And this section, let's call it, um, let's keep it just straight darker gray and we'll call it create better spaces. We might update the content in a little bit. Um, once we have that going, now what we want to do inside these sections, and again, this is the advantage of working with the navigator, we can easily just say, do that. And now we have that effect going on that we wanted. So first off, let's of course change the image. So that way we're working here with a different image. Let's go with this one. And we want this image to overlay on top of this area. So what we're going to need to do, and by the way, sometimes when you're doing these duplications, it becomes more work than to just go ahead and create it manually. I think in this case, it was a relatively simple uh, duplication. So it actually saved us a lot of time. So what you saw me do here while I was speaking is I, I moved over the margin from being on the left side to the right side. So the margin here is minus 15 on the right side. And what we also need to do is go to the column and let's just modify this to be on this side. So there you go. So now we have that same effect happening and let's maybe change up the color. So we'll go to style and give it a different color. So what we'll do to this section, because we have this overflowing to the right this time, we're going to need to offset that. So we can say padding on the left side be, um, let's say around 50, and that'll kind of give it some room to breathe. And if we look at the entire website, it's starting to come together. Again, there's probably different things I would apply here, um, you know, just to keep things consistent but I want you all to get an idea of what it's like to just throw a landing page together relatively quickly and get up and running with some ads and then tweak it as you go and modify content as you go. Um, so here we are within just a few minutes, we already have two sections. We have the uh, heading area going on. What I do see here is that maybe we should add to the heading area um, Oh, we did add some shadow, but let's give it a bit more shadow. I think we should be a bit more aggressive here so that it's easier. So you'll see it's it gets easier to read the white text on top. So let's keep it at 80. So let's create our call to action section. And this time let's actually use something from the library. That way it is uh, again, just another form of working with Elementor. So we can say call to action. And what we're looking for is something like this maybe. Um, yeah, let's go with this. Nice and simple. And we'll modify everything so that way it's looking better and according to our coloring. So let's delete the subheading, keep it simple. Let's change this to you have dreams, we have ideas. Let's modify the text so that way it is, oops. Ariel. Uh, let's make it 65, that's good. 
Let's transform this to capitalize. Let's give the section a different background color so that it fits our, actually, because we went with this color over here, let's offset that with the grayer color. That looks better. And we can throw that color that we wanted here. So let's see what we have here going on. So on hover, it goes green. What we wanted to do is first off be, let's give the background color. Oops. So let's give the background color uh, what we want, let's change the text to be white. And on hover, let's do, well, on hover, it gets larger. We can kind of keep it. So if we just eliminate the green and change the color to white, that should do. So it kind of just gets bigger. We can maybe give it a background color that would be similar to this one, but maybe just offset it just a little bit to give it more effect. So you can kind of see that that transitions just a little bit. I think that looks good. Perfect. So our next section is gonna be our services. So let's go ahead and create another section. This section is gonna have, it's gonna be a heading and then it's gonna be six images, kind of like a gallery. Um, I'm not a big fan of the way that the Elementor widgets do the gallery. I often find myself just kind of building something that's a bit more customized to my liking. Um, so in this case, let's, let's, uh, let's first start off with our main section. And in this section, we gave it a top padding of five EM. So let's do the same thing here, just so that we're consistent here. So EM top is five, bottom is five. And let's throw a heading in there. So this is gonna be our services. And let's throw a let's have a divider in here let's actually go back to this and just make it in the middle and this element is going to be in the middle as well and the width is going to be a lot smaller so we want it just kind of like that let's give it a nice round five and the color is going to be our primary color and let's make it a bit heavier with weight that looks better a nice round of five again. Okay, so the next section that we're going to build is gonna be the services section. We could definitely come here and just you know drag and drop a gallery widget. I think it'll be cooler for us to actually do an exercise here where we build something manually. And building it manually with Elementor means that we're not constrained to some predefined settings that were decided for, say, in this particular section, the gallery section. So. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. What we'll do is we'll drop a section right under the divider. And again, we want here three columns. We'll take care of that in just a sec. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is um, drop an image into here. And once we have the image, let's go ahead and choose our image. So we're gonna do, let's go with uh, this section being the kitchen. And we're also gonna want a heading right under. So it's gonna be an image of the kitchen and then a heading and then another image of the next service and then another heading. So we'll duplicate and get this going in just a sec. Let's go ahead and get this to be in the center. Let's call this kitchen. We might modify this a little bit in a sec. Uh, let's give this a custom setting. Uh, let's go with 800 by 600 so it's not too large. That looks pretty good. And let's now do this again before we duplicate the column and let's drag this right under. And this might be easier depending on the screen size you're working with. This might be easier for you to do it over here. Uh, and while we're at it, let's call this services. So it might be easier for you to you know drag and drop some things here in the navigation. 
Um, so we need one more heading. Let's duplicate that. And now that we have that, let's rename it to additions. And let's give this actually, I should have done it before I duplicated, but let's make it Ariel uh, one point, let's say three, five. Is that good? 1.5. That looks pretty good. And let's transform this to uppercase. And what we can do now is just copy. And this time we're only going to paste the styling. So it'll make it exactly the same. Okay, so now that we have this going, you're going to see why um, we waited to duplicate the third column. So what we'll do is we'll duplicate again. That looks pretty good now, doesn't it? And we're going to duplicate once more. And then we're going to delete that last column. And now we have a gallery. So now all we need to do is just uh, change this to be, you know, a bathroom and change this setting to be bathroom. Do the same thing here. This will be uh, basements. So we'll call this basements. Did I spell that right? Yep, basements. And let's do additions. That's actually already good. And let's do uh, deck and patio. So this will be decks and patios. I'm probably going to make that text just a little bit smaller. I feel like it's a bit aggressive right now. We'll see how it looks when we hide everything else and view the page. Uh, last image, let's do what, what else do we have here? Roofing. Let's rename this to roofing. And let me just update so we don't lose anything here. And let's take a look at how this looks. So that's pretty good. So let's go ahead and let's make this actually Let's go with 1.1. I think that looks a lot better. This is a bit bold and aggressive. So again, we're going to have to do this. And you can go with whatever, you know, you like. There's no real way to go about this. So we could just drop a form from here. That's what I'm going to do. I feel like we haven't used the widget in a while. So let me just create a section. Again, our sections, uh, we've already been predefining uh, top and bottom of 5, oops, 5 EM. So let's go with 5 and 5, and we're going to drop the form right in the middle. Let's give the style of the section a background color of the gray we've been using. I feel like that looks pretty good. And let's get our form widget. Drop it right there. And let's first define the fields that we want to work with. So for the lead that we want to capture, we definitely want a first name. So let's get that. And for the second field, I think we're going to want a uh, let's keep let's keep the email. Let's just duplicate this one and we'll change this to last name. And what we can do here is we don't actually need this entire field to be like that. So we can limit it to 50%. And as soon as we limit the last name to 50%, they'll jump onto the same line. And I think that looks a lot better. And we're going to actually compress it just a bit more in a sec with some padding. But this is starting to come together. So we have a first name, last name. We have an email. And we do want a message. But let's duplicate the email and change it to phone. Since home improvement is a local, it tends to be a local business. So what we're going to actually want here is a phone number. Um, I think for the label, let's call it phone. But for the placeholder, let's do something that will actually be, um, so say one. And then for my local area, it's going to be, you know, uh, 301 is a local number in, in, in area code in Maryland. You're probably going to want to use something that's local to the business you're working with. 
Um, so 301, I'm just gonna make up a number here. The most important part here, again, is the actual area code so that it does look like a real number. Um, let's just do 2301. That's not a real number, <laughs> just making sure. Um, so let's make the email 50% and let's make the phone number again 50% and our form is going to start to look a lot better. So that's already looking a lot better. Let's hide the labels and that looks a bit more elegant, I think. Let's make our button uh, the same colors as the colors of uh, our landing page and what we've been working with. So I'm going to style and then button and we have here on hover a different color. So first off, let's actually change this color to be our primary color. Let's go back for a sec and change the button text not to be, whoop, not to be send, but to actually be submit. Let me just do it over here with a capital uh, submit. And we could have done it here as well by modifying the text. I'm going to make it Arial EM. Uh, one should be good. Let's give it some weight. I think that's pretty good. And let's space it out just a bit. So let's go with 2.5. Actually, want it just a little lighter. That looks pretty pretty good submit um, and now on hover we don't have anything happening here so let's give it a hover color weak so something I sometimes will do is I'll just choose the same color and give it just a softer effect it's technically making it somewhat transparent but usually you can't really notice that especially when you have a darker background like that so you do have the effect of, of what you want here with the hover. Okay, so one other thing that we can do here is, you'll notice that if we hide everything, this is pretty wide. And I think that that puts some constraint on the eye and it makes it less elegant, less smooth. If we have to jump all the way from the left side to the right when we're filling it out, it doesn't really feel like this is together in the way that it could be. And I think a simple solution to that would be just coming to this section and then unchecking this so that we're not putting, you know, uh, padding across the entire, all, all sides. And really all we want to modify is let's make it EM. And if we go say five on the right and five on the left, you'll see what this does. We can even be a bit more aggressive here if we really want it to be a smaller form. Um, and I think that looks just a bit better. And what we're really missing here is a heading, which we should have done in the beginning. Um, the heading should be get in touch. Whoops, get in touch. And let's make it in the middle and let's give it a color of white. There is our heading. So again, we could modify this from Elementor settings so that way all headings are the same and things are kind of systematically happening. I just wanted to show you how quickly this can be done. Um, I think within about an hour or two you can get this thing going. And the last thing we're going to do is to just provide some sense of security here. Let's add a footer. Um, let's make it really simple. So we'll do one last section. I think this section doesn't have to be with EM5 on top and bottom. Let's make it something like three on top and bottom. Let's give our footer a background color. I have the color in my clipboard, so I can just paste it in. So it's just a soft gray that we can work with. Okay, so let's drop a heading in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this dynamic tag for our heading and we're going to use something called current and date and time. What this is going to do is actually update the year automatically for us. So obviously we don't want it to look like that, um, but that's the idea you can see here. So we'll never have to go back and update you know, the year to be 2022 if you know things like that are happening. And that's something that you want to keep in mind, you want this stuff to be as automated as possible so that way you, you don't have to constantly go back and update things. And you also don't want your client to have, 
you know, outdated um, text or anything in that nature. So it makes life both for you and your client a lot easier. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to advanced and before we're gonna add copyright and then after, and I have here some text. So it's gonna say copyright. And the last thing we need to do is the date format. Uh, let's go with custom and what we can do is just remove everything well let's just remove everything and keep the year and you'll see what this does right away so let's just give it some room to breathe so i think that looks pretty good all we got to do now is just give it a slightly softer color uh, let's see what will work here that looks pretty good and let's make it a lot smaller we can use Helvetica EM uh, let's go with one since this is just some copyright message and make it in the middle that looks pretty good I'm actually gonna make this even slightly softer that's pretty good okay so that's our landing page. We, we are pretty much at this point done with our general concept for the landing page. The next step would be to just add some text of whatever you would want. I have some text that's uh, pretty good to go. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead and drop it in here. So I always like to actually paste the text into here so that way with the visual stuff, it randomly will uh, add some some weird, funky stuff to it, uh, HTML tags and whatnot. So we're going to go again to this section and to the text. I might modify this a bit. I just want you all to see how this looks. Let's go to this button and let's give it a different background color. So right now there is nothing and by default it'll give it that. For you, it might be something slightly different. So I went with that color. I think that looks a lot better. And what I'm gonna do now is, so again, we have navigation that's gonna help us uh, skip through areas. So what we'll do is let's call this area, let's give it a CSS ID of who we are. And it'll tell you right here that you don't need to add the pound key. And you, have, you can't do spaces, it's a CSS ID. So give it a dash who we are is gonna be one area. So that'll help you kind of get to here and you can go through this area. And then let's call this area services. So again, with no pound, I'm gonna add the word services under advanced to the CSS ID. And once I update this, oh, and you know what? Let's add one more, uh, get in touch. And this is actually gonna be navigated to from the get quote button. Um, and so I think here we, yeah, so get in touch and above here, we're going to have a button called get quote and here as well, get, get it free is not good. So let's do get quote. So all those different areas, and we can actually see this play out right now. So we can say, um, get, uh, we called it get in touch. So get quote and we can do get free. Quote. Okay, so if I update this, again, this area right here has a CSS ID of get in touch. And I just told this button to navigate with the pound. If I didn't leave the pound, it would try to find a page called get in touch. So in our case, it's going to find a section called get in touch. So if I click on this, get in touch. And get in touch, All right? That should be, what are we missing here? Oh, you know, you know what? <clears throat> we don't need that backslash. There you go. So you just saw that happen in live as well. So there you go. So we have here now a page that's starting to come together. Um, and that's what the navigation in the top is gonna do, the same effect. It'll 
hop around to different areas. So again, we have here a section called services that we're gonna to navigate to, and we have a section called who we are. So let's go back out. Okay, so let's navigate to appearance, menus. Let's create our menu. Um, let's call it main nav. And in our menu, let's remove this item. I'm gonna go ahead and add custom items. What we will have is we wanna navigate to who we are and this is the text here is going to be who we are now this text can be you can modify this um, later from the other side but I like to also try to be consistent here so we want who we are we have services the last one is going to be a button so technically um, services and who we are is really all we need here so let's create menu and we will be able to pull this menu from a different section. So now the next step is to go to theme builder under templates and under header, go ahead and click on add new header and let's call this um, top nav create template. Now, if you have the pro, you can select from here a bunch of options. What I'm going to go ahead and do is actually exit out of this and we will go ahead and build something manually. So we will have the logo on the left, the navigation in the middle and the get in touch or get free quote button on the right. Now, these columns don't necessarily have to be the exact same width, so we'll be able to kind of play around with this. You'll see that in a sec. So on the left side, let's go ahead and drop the site title widget. And that'll show ABA home improvement. You can play with the font. Um, let's go ahead and make this white. So text color will be white. And let's do the background while we're at it so we see everything that we're working with. So I clicked here on the section and untick the padding box. We only wanna give padding Let's go with um, one EM in the top and in the bottom. And let's also go to the style and give a background color. We can go with this color and maybe even give it some transparency. And let's add here a navigation. So the nav menu will go here Let's make the nav menu go to the right side. Let's squeeze that to this direction. And I don't like these little underline bars when you hover over, so we can actually go to the style, nope, sorry, not the style, but um, the underline pointer, just click on none and that'll take that away. And then we'll go to the style and under hover, um, I like to just give it a subtle effect to the text so what we can do is make the normal text be ever so slightly different, still white, but just a softer shade. So we'll go here. And then what we can do is make the bright white be the actual text. And what it'll do is just kind of give it a glare when you go over it. And we can make it more aggressive if we want. So we can make it just slightly grayer and when you go over it now, it kind of shines when you click over. Again, the end goal here is to get this button to look more flashy. So we definitely don't want to dim it down to the point where this is not you know, user friendly. The call to action here is the get in touch button. So let's add that button now. Um, let's give that button, we actually want to go to get in touch. Remember to not leave a backslash. If you add a backslash here, it'll go to a page. So just give it the pound, telling it to go to that CSS section that we defined. And click on style. Give it a background color of primary. That's already looking much better. And the text, let's go with um, get quote. 
go back to style, modify the typography, go to Arial, EM, one should do, let's give it a weight of 500 for now, and let's go with uppercase, that looks pretty good. Um, let's actually take it this way just a little bit. And what we need to do is actually, first of all, to make sure that everything is on the same line, go to the columns here and click on middle. So click on each column and make sure that the layout, uh, the vertical alignment is to the middle. So everything is kind of on the same line here. Uh, don't, don't ever leave it default in this situation. I don't like to kind of assume. Okay, so I feel like this looks pretty good now. I went ahead and changed the color background and just increased the button just slightly. I think this looks pretty good now. In my particular situation, what we're going to need to do is duplicate this menu. And I'm going to go ahead and call the top menu the desktop menu. And I'm going to call the bottom menu the mobile menu. Now, the reason I need to do this is because in my particular situation, the title here is really long. And what happens is, even if I'm going to remove this, which we will, so you can go ahead and do that like I just did, it's still going to cause issues when you go into a responsive mode. So if we take a look, you don't want this to look like that. What I'm shooting for is to have, you know, the, the call to action button on the right side and then the ability to just click on the site title on the left side. So Again, just for the sake of this uh, example, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is delete the EBA home improvement in my case. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a heading and let's go with EBA homes. I think that's good. Let me just um, update the text to be white. That'll be good and Let's make sure that this floats to the right side this time and not the left like before. I'm gonna also go to the desktop version, advanced, responsive, hide on mobile. And so what we just did with this setting is the top menu, the desktop menu is gonna display on tablets and desktops. On tablets, this will work fine, but on mobile, this is just too much. And I don't think we need the navigation for the mobile device. I really just want a, again, this is a landing page. I want call to actions, you know, in a few places laid out in an elegant way, but no more than that for the user to just indulge in the content. If they're sold on the idea, fill out their information. So I think we're pretty good. Let's go to the mobile one, click on advanced, do the same concept, but backwards. So we're gonna hide it on desktop and hide it on tablet, but we're gonna show this menu on mobile. And if we go here to responsive mode, that is still on two lines. So let's see if we can get this typography to be slightly smaller. Let's go with, let's say one. Oh, you know what? It's only because on mobile, this reset. Okay, cool. I think that looks a lot better and we can increase this back up. I thought that's what was causing it. Make it EBA homes and let's make this a little smaller. We want it to be, there you go, on the same. That should be pretty good. Okay, so if we update this, and if we click on preview, let's see what that'll look like. Okay, and then if we go to the mobile, so the navigation is still showing, we're gonna need to hide that. So let's get out of the responsive mode here. And for this, we wanna make sure that the breaking point is none. I don't want it to break, I want it to be the same. So if we go back and preview, it should still display this for tablets. And so we can make this text a bit smaller. We definitely have enough room here to try to modify that. 
I'm not even going to get into that right now. Um, I just want to kind of move along and y'all have the idea of how to tweak this now. So we're going to keep going. I think that looks pretty good. Let's make sure that our conditions are in place. Condition on the entire site, save and close. Exit to dashboard. Go back to your page. Let's take a look how this comes out to be with everything together. So there's our menu. Still stays the same. That's how it would load for a tablet. Again, you can modify that. For now, I'm just going to leave it. We're still going to be able to get some results. And that's how it's going to look on a mobile device. I see that we still need to fix these two. I'll go ahead and fix that. And you want to make sure also to preview your website on a mobile device to make sure that things are looking all right. So for the most part, we're going to need to do just some small tweaks, but overall, this is looking pretty good. So there's a few ways to go about this. You can make the text a bit smaller, so that way these two can fit on the same line and you give the same feel. Or for a mobile device, you can duplicate this section. That way, you know, a different style of a, of a, a section will, will load and, and do the same trick that we did before for the responsive sake. So you can, you know, hide one section on mobile device and display one section on, on desktop and so forth. Um, but I think this is looking, it's just starting to come together. So we're up to about an hour or so with the tutorial. So what I will do is let's modify together, uh, maybe the top section to make sure that that is mobile friendly, because we do see here that we have issues with the buttons and the rest you all can play with and make sure that things are looking good on a mobile device. Again. Uh, the idea is to play with the responsive settings, increase and decrease some of the text, and just make sure that everything looks good. With Elementor, it's really fun to do these things and easy. You can go ahead and define that the text will be slightly smaller on a mobile device and use the same section. Or again, like I said earlier, you can flip those sections and completely show something different for a mobile and desktop device. And what we will quickly do here is, let's hide this. I just want to get a bigger canvas to work with. Um, and let's make it responsive. But once we're in responsive mode, what strikes right away is that these sections are taking more width than they should. And so what we can do is we can go here in the mobile section and it'll show you here these little icons showing that we are editing just the mobile environment. And so what we can do is we can say that we want this section to only take up to this column, I'm sorry, to only take up to 50% and this column to only take up to 50% or, you know, we could always say even less if we wanted to um, or more. But I actually think that, you know, having get quote here and get quote here is a bit much so what i'm gonna go ahead and we can you know make these buttons uh the same as well because i do see here that we we should maybe play with the text sizes a little bit to make sure that these buttons are the same but i really think that this whole thing should just hide on a um, mobile device i don't really think that we need that and that'll probably look a lot better and then this text what we can do is just make it slightly smaller on a mobile again it's showing that we're on mobile here so we can make it um pop out, but be just slightly more friendly on a mobile device. And shadow seems to be good. And I think that'll be a lot better. So if we preview, everything on desktop should be the same. These buttons reflect. And when we go to our mobile device, I think that looks a lot better. So when our website loads, Folks just kind of see EBA Homes, get quote, turn your dreams into reality, and they dive right into the page. Okay, now again, I'm going to leave you all to play with um, how you want your mobile styles to look. I think it'll be also great practice for you. So in this video, we got a taste of what it's like to launch a landing page with Elementor and WordPress and even have a form capture information for us. I've personally learned a ton through this process, and I have a better understanding of how to go about these recordings for future takes to be smoother. 
If anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to support the channel, the easiest way to do so is by hitting that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos and thank you all for watching.